Oh, look, here's a mountain of evidence that supports evolution. But if you put a rug over it and pretend it's not there, then essentially... You're a creationist, since that's what Calvin Smith here from Answers in Genesis is doing as he demonstrates a lack of evidence for evolution. Hello, I'm the Skeptic, the British floating circle that watches people make extraordinary claims and then I explain why I don't accept what they're saying and maybe you'll agree with some of those things. It doesn't matter about the production quality of something. The truth is only the truth if it's the truth. Answers in Genesis clearly have a lot of money, and unfortunately, they throw a lot of it at making high production quality videos, which may make it seem that there's more truth to the claim. Maybe they could spend more money on demonstrating the God, and not on saying, this claim is dumb because I don't understand it. Though, before we're exposed to just why evolution is a lie, if this isn't your first skeptic video, hit the like, the subscribe, and the bell, and you'll hopefully be exposed to more atheist content in your feed. And a super thanks to those that hit super thanks in some recent videos. Condor Boss 3339, Alfred the Hound 2, Robert L4824, Tigger Lady, and Echo J E T. Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe bestows leaves upon you all, more hen. Right, time to deny some evidence of the most supported theory there is. From its inception, the scientific proofs offered to support human evolution have been riddled with holes. Oh, hang on. It's only human evolution, not evolution as a whole. Does that then mean that a god created beasts that could evolve? Since, you know, we can actually see it happening in some species. But because a god supposedly created humans to be the apex, which obviously we're not, we're just lucky enough to have advanced as we did. And that it's ridiculous to assume that we do share common ancestry with the other great apes and mammals and even all life on Earth. Got it. In fact... Just like the dubious sideshow examples touted by circus shysters, many of the earliest proofs were fraudulent. And modern research shows that many proofs were driven by scientific ignorance and evolutionary interpretations rather than solid evidence. Hang on, because some things were wrong hundreds of years ago, because maybe a lack of understanding of the data, that means it's wrong now? Sure, show us what's wrong with human evolution. However, the Bible is clear that many people attempt to deny the God of Scripture because of their unrighteousness, as a way to avoid personal judgment for their sin. And, in the book of Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe, Leaf Be Upon Her, it's clear that many people deny evolution because they're convinced, for bad reasons, that the Bible is the truth, even though it's never been demonstrated to be. In essence, many are willing to believe a lie rather than the truth, if it suits their purpose. They become compliant with error and are willing to be deceived. You mean, like, I think a god is real and I want to go to a floaty skyland, so I have to believe that a god is real and that the actual evidence for evolution is completely made up. And if a church leader finds out that you believe in stuff that's anti-god, you're shunned, so you pretend that it doesn't make sense. Maybe. Perhaps it's like the saying often attributed to P.T. Barnum says. There's a sucker born every minute. And most of them are in the church. Take Neanderthals, for example. In 1856, workmen digging in a cave in the Neander Valley, near Dusseldorf in Germany, discovered a fossilized skull cap, two femurs, and bone fragments. Examined by one professor, Schaffhausen, a professional anatomist, he concluded that they were fully human. However, four years later, after the release of Darwin's On the Origin of Species, the search for fossils of imagined ape-like ancestors of man increased with much vigour amongst naturalists. Or, you know, they knew roughly where to look and started digging, finding more and more evidence of different human-like creatures. And lo and behold, Irish geologist William King decided to re-examine the fossil skull of Neanderthal man and see what he thought. His conclusion... Like other Darwinians of the day, he argued, against the professional opinion of an expert anatomist, that Neanderthal man was an ape-like creature. And so positive was he that he actually declared, The thoughts and desires which once dwelt within it never soared beyond those of the brute. Such clairvoyant ability as to somehow perceive the fossilized thoughts emanating from a collection of bones demonstrates his obvious evolutionary bias. 
And we're talking about a scientist that was born over 200 years ago. Yes, he may have said that, and it might be silly. But no more silly than folks believing they hear and understand the thoughts of an undemonstrated being coming from a book. It doesn't change the fact that bones are from a different hominid. It doesn't show a bias, it just shows that people fill gaps when they don't have sufficient data. And this wild speculation wasn't simply against the opinion of one lone expert from across the aisle of human origin ideology. It flew in the face of no other than the great anatomist, Rudolf Virchow, one of the most prominent physicians of the 19th century, who also argued that Neanderthals were fully human in every respect, with any abnormalities being the result of their suffering from rickets or arthritis. However, depictions of Neanderthals as stooped over ape men began to proliferate evolutionary literature. And such representations were mimicked in the circuses and carnival freak shows of the day. The evolutionary mindset took hold of all sectors of society. I'm not sure how this is a lack of evidence for evolution, though. But keep it going with the high production value. This is great. Becoming the evolutionary memes of their day. For example, in 1929, life-sized statues of bestial Neanderthals greeted visitors viewing Chicago's Field Museum of Natural History and were only replaced relatively recently. After an overwhelming amount of evidence collected over the years proved that Neanderthals were simply powerfully built people, well within the modern range of human anatomy, they were replaced with more modern depictions, which today look like normal humans. And alligators and crocodiles look similar, but are different. Asian and African elephants, also similar, but are different. Butterflies and moths, just because something looks similar to something else, it doesn't make it the same species. A current Chicago Field Museum article states, the first of two Neanderthal family dioramas were installed in 1929. In the early 1970s, the Neanderthal figures were replaced with new ones. By 1994, the Hall of the Stone Age of the Old World exhibit had been dismantled because most were considered to be scientifically inaccurate. The Hall had included the Neanderthal family. Because science continues to learn, it doesn't stick its metaphorical fingers in its metaphorical ears and say, la la la, I can't hear you, when something new is uncovered. Unlike religion, especially Jesus-y ones that won't listen to the fact that if Jesus was a real person, and obviously not some supernatural being, he would have had much darker skin than he's actually depicted with. So, despite their still being used as examples of our supposed primitive ancestors in popular movies and catchy commercials, such as the Simple Enough for a Caveman to Do It series today, Neanderthals were never subhuman. Who said they were subhuman? They were just another branch on a diverse hominid tree. That idea was always a false imposition applied upon the facts rather than derived directly from them. And perhaps the most definitive confirmation of this comes from no less than Dr. Eric Trinkhaus. Yeah, what we need is confirmation of something already known to make it seem like you know what you're talking about so people go, oh, he knows what he's talking about, so what he says about evolution being wrong must be true. Nope. But what does Eric say? A paleoanthropologist specializing in Neanderthals, early modern human biology, and human evolution. He's considered one of the world's foremost authorities on Neanderthal man, and he has concluded, Detailed comparisons of Neanderthal skeletal remains with those of modern humans have shown that there's nothing in Neanderthal anatomy that conclusively indicates locomotor, manipulative, intellectual, or linguistic abilities inferior to those of modern humans. So, evolutionists used Neanderthals for approximately 175 years to lace the minds of millions with evolutionary ideas of proto-human derivatives, only to later affirm their full humanity. And yet, still different enough to be their own species. How is that difficult to understand? But what about other examples that have been offered to the public? The most famous hoax, and one that is much bemoaned among the evolutionary community... Bigfoot! It's Bigfoot, isn't it? ...is the famous Piltdown Man. The supposed ape-man skull and jawbone was found in 1912 by a labourer digging in a gravel pit near the town of Piltdown in England. Oh, those pesky Brits! You can't trust them, I say! It was announced that both pieces came from the same ancient ape-man and dubbed Piltdown Man. 
For 40 years, this supposed proof of human evolution was displayed in museum exhibits and textbooks as proof positive that human beings had descended from ape-like ancestors. With hand-drawn, supposed scientific images of what the creature must have looked like, all with amazing similarity to how the freak show Missing Links were portrayed, described and depicted by their promotional artists as well. Only after four decades was the evidence re-examined and revealed as a fraud. And it wasn't even a good fraud, as one could easily see how the teeth from the jawbone had been filed down to make them look more human, and the bones had been chemically treated to make them look very old. It was simply a combination of an old human skull and a modern ape jawbone stuck together. Oh no! Someone wanted to be the first to discover something, maybe so they could make a ton of money over a hundred years ago. But science said, no, this is wrong. What a shame that science proved older supposed science wrong. But hey, science isn't afraid to say when it's wrong. It's happy to say, well, here's why it's wrong. Let's learn from it. Don't you also hate it when folks focus on something like the fake skull and try to make it proof of the existence of something when there's no other data to support it? How's that shroud of Turin again? We raise this example today not simply to rub it in that one evidence for evolution has been disproven. That's good, because there are mountains and mountains of actual non-fabricated evidence which doesn't give a crap about a hoax. But to point out that the acceptance and promotion of such evidence by professionals for over 40 years... <laughs> but a hundred years ago... ...can only be attributed to one of two things. Pathetic scientific acumen displayed by the evolutionary scientists of the day, or an agenda that made people willing to overlook the obvious fraud to accomplish its ideologic goals. Or some folks wanted to get rich quick. For hundreds of people involved in producing museum-grade copies of the exhibit, distributing them to various museums around the world, and producing numerous textbook diagrams and descriptions based on the evidence, all not to detect the fraud, seems highly suspicious or perhaps negligent at best. It took them 40 years. Maybe because technology wasn't advanced enough to see. Maybe these types of studies weren't as well researched. There are plenty of options, not just the main one that helps your narrative. Now, just five years later, a Nebraskan rancher found what he thought was a special kind of tooth on his farm. And an evolutionist paleontologist friend of his was excited at the prospect that it might be from an ape man. Once again, an artist with a healthy helping of evolutionary imagination produced a portrait of Nebraska man, a hairy ape man, along with his ape woman wife, complete with an ape woman bob cut, apparently to make her appear feminine, but not too feminine. Several years later, scientists confirmed that the tooth had come from a type of pig. The whole fiasco had nothing to do with apes or people. It had everything to do with evolutionary presuppositions that drove false conclusions, all based on laughably flimsy evidence. All people wanting to be recognized but failing miserably. And hang on, was it religion that said, no, that's a pig tooth? Or was it scientific methods that worked out what it was? That's right, not religion. Much as how the carnivals cycled through the unfortunate ape-men performers of the past, a whole slew of proposed human ancestors have come and gone over the years as a carousel of caveman candidates have been proposed, debunked, reassigned, or removed from the forefront of human evolutionary thought. Well, that's a bit of a stretch. They haven't been debunked or removed. Wouldn't it be more accurate to say that you're just dismissing the different species because it goes against the godly agenda? Yes, some of these extra things from a few hundred years ago were made up. Who knows why? But there are tons of documented remains of different, demonstrable species of other hominid that are no longer alive. Cro-Magnon, Peking Man, Java Man, Ramapithecus. All of these were once shouted from the proverbial rooftops in both popular news articles and serious scientific publications as proof of evolution. Yes, hundreds of years ago, but science got better and could delve deeper. 
Cro-Magnon, Peking and Java Man are all roughly modern humans, but Ramapithecus is now classified as closer to the orangutan lineage. So what? That doesn't mean all findings are null and void. You're forgetting many others. Neanderthals, which still existed despite you saying nuh uh, Homo habilis, Australopithecus afarensis, Australopithecus africanus, Ardipithecus ramidus, Paranthropus robustus, Homo heidelbergensis, Chianthropus platyops, and many, many more not listed. Only later lose favour among the more progressive evolutionary community. Currently popular candidates such as Homo erectus are not faring much better under scrutiny. Under whose scrutiny? Yours <laughs> doesn't count, mate. Although smaller than the average human is today, the brain size is within the range of modern people. And studies of the middle ear have shown that Homo erectus walk just as we do. So because so many things are similar, you're saying that they're the same? Like monkeys and squirrels are the same. They climb trees and have tails. Or sea lions and fish are the same because they swim well. Come on, this can't be a real argument. There's nothing about their skeletons that fall outside of the normal human range. And their remains have been found in the same strata near ordinary Homo sapiens. Clear evidence that they live together. Different species of birds live together. That doesn't make them all the same type of bird. Given the range of heights, sizes and features that we see among the fully human race today, they're not exactly anything to write your evolutionary thesis about. Not exactly true. If two parents are tall and their offspring are also tall, that's evolution at work. That's an observation to write about. However, there's still one very popular contender often discussed. The famous fossil find called... Lucy. Here we go. Q thinking that Lucy is the only Australopithecus afarensis ever discovered. Something about missing bones and whatnot. Hoping that proves that early human ancestors and species we share common ancestors with are all lies. Australopithecus afarensis, popularly known as Lucy. It's just the one that's called Lucy. Is still the most well-known modern example of supposed human evolution today. She was once much touted as our supposed ancestor and uniquely named because of the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. It was playing when she was assembled by the team that found her in Ethiopia. However, her star has faded. For example, one of the main reasons evolutionists suggest that Lucy walked on two feet instead of fours like the ape she resembles is that she was found near a set of fossilized human-looking footprints in a rock layer that they believed had formed at the time Lucy lived, but dated as older than human existence. They then concluded that these footprints must have come from Lucy's kind, and museum reconstruction gave her human-looking feet. However, they later found such tracks a full 932 miles, nearly 1,500 kilometers, away from Lucy's bones in Tanzania. A far better explanation is that their evolutionary assumptions are just wrong. Well, perhaps they were at that moment, but that doesn't stop the Lucy fossil or other Australopithecus afarensis fossils from existing. And that they're simply a set of human footprints that have nothing to do with the cobbled together group of bones called Lucy that aren't necessarily even collected from the same creature. You see, many laypersons likely imagine that specimens like Lucy were found in a heap and carefully retrieved as a somewhat articulated skeleton that clearly shows these ape-like hominids in similar form to how their reconstructions are shown in books and museum replicas. However, her skeleton is only 40% complete. So it's a good thing that she's not the only fossil of that species being studied, right? There's another one, one of hundreds found in 1995 that took 15 years to excavate called Littlefoot. This one is around 90% complete. All this is like debunking one creationist's wacky ideas and then saying creationists don't exist anymore. A 2015 New Scientist article reported, A careful look at the ancient hominin skeleton suggests that one bone may actually belong to a baboon. Now, statues portraying Lucy in museums to this day display her walking upright with human-like hands and feet. However, when Lucy was found, she didn't have hands, just three left hand bones that were incomplete and not human-like, or feet whatsoever. 
Maybe they were ape-like hands, which may be a more accurate description of what ours are too, since, you know, we're apes. And if the hip and leg bones are set a certain way, you can tell the position a creature like Lucy would have moved around. Back then, with no other data to go on, the finders may have assumed what the feet looked like given what they know about bipedal movement. But then they found more fossils of the same species, which meant... They readjusted. It's not difficult. And doesn't stop the species from having existed. These depictions were assumed based off of the footprints found 1,500 kilometers away, with no other physical evidence whatsoever. And scientists have since found other, more complete skeletons of such australopithecines, which do include hand and feet bones. And from them, We can make a safe guess that Lucy's hands had long, curved fingers, suited for climbing in trees, and that Lucy's feet had opposable toes seen in the hand-like feet of apes that could easily grab and climb. You know what other creatures have that? Baboons and gorillas, and yet they spend the majority of their time on the ground. So that doesn't stop them from being some distant cousin of ours. She didn't have human-like feet. Detailed studies of the inner ears, skulls, and bones suggest that Lucy and her like were not in fact transitioning to human anytime soon. Things don't evolve like Pokemon. It would take thousands or hundreds of thousands of generations from a creature like Lucy to reach what we recognize as humans. Someone doesn't understand how evolution works. They may have walked more upright than most apes, but not like humans. Well, who's saying that they did? Or why does it even matter exactly how they walked? Between is probably actually a good thing. Once all of the evolutionary ideologies and interpretations are stripped away, Australopithecus afarensis is very similar to a pygmy chimpanzee. Oh, of course, a creature that doesn't actually exist. What you mean is bonobo, which, that's right, are a different species to actual chimpanzees. They're not the same. How is he not grasping this? A key to understanding all of this can be found in one of the more famous attractions of the Pickards Museum, Trongate, circa 1908, in the character that was known as Solomon the Man Monkey. In a reversal of the typical Missing Link sideshow attractions, Solomon was an actual chimpanzee, dressed up in men's Victorian finery and allowed to wander around. People were amused at the absurdity of seeing an ape aping a man. I wonder where else we see apes dressed like humans. Oh, that's right. Everywhere, because we're all apes. And he, too, was touted as Darwin's missing link. In essence, these examples demonstrate both ends of the spectrum of man's attempts to provide evidence for human evolution. Naturalists have looked for the most human-looking ape fossils they can find, or conversely, the most ape-like human fossils possible. However, as Kipling said, Oh, east is east, and west is west, and never the twain shall meet. And you're also demonstrating that people say stupid things that make no sense. I'm from the east of the Atlantic, my wife is from the west of it, we met. And people change cultures all the time, which is what this is actually about. Nothing to do with evolution. Typical theist twisting words to confirm meaning in something unrelated. The fact is that Darwin's missing links are still missing because they never existed. Men were specially created in the image of God. Right, so you are just ignoring all the evidence and saying that a God made humans from dust and ribs, despite that never being demonstrated. It's absolutely absurd. No one does their 23 and me and discovers that they're 1% sand. Sadly, belief in deceptive evolutionary ideas have led many people to conclude that the God of the Bible doesn't exist, much to the detriment of mankind. Exactly. So keep on learning, heathens. Teach your kids facts rather than stories. We've got work to do. I'm not entirely sure that any of that really was demonstrating a lack of evidence. It was definitely ignoring a lot and just bringing up some things that were wrong, but also corrected by science and not religion. How ridiculous. But maybe you agree that all this did was prove how little evidence there is for different hominid species. Let me know in the section below. I'm going to skeptic this as actually plenty of evidence still out there for evolution. A big thank you to this month's top level ticks on Patreon. Godless Granny, Addy Rockart, The Enixes, Jakari, Whiskey Tech Fred, and The Absolute Lunatic Travis, as well as all the $3 base ticks. You can become a supporter on Patreon too at patreon.com slash the skeptic. The link is in the description, along with links to all my other socials. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. From me, The Skeptic, stay safe, keep thinking logically, and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. See you next Saturday. 